My name is Tom. I grew up without a father since I was little. Since it was normal for me not to have a father, I never really felt lonely. I knew my mom loved and cherished me very much, and as long as she was there, I didn't feel lonely. However, as I grew up, I came to realize that having a father at home was considered normal by most people. I think it was around first grade when one of my friends asked me why I didn't have a dad. That was the first time I asked my mom about it. Hey, mom, why don't I have a dad? I asked out of pure curiosity, but my mom seemed shaken by my question. Seeing tears in her eyes, I realized I couldn't ask her any more questions. Even as a child, I clearly understood that this was a topic I shouldn't ask about. Well, well, actually, just as my mom was trying to regain her composure to speak, I interrupted her. Never mind, it's okay, as long as I have you, mom. She hugged me tightly as I hugged her back. I didn't understand our family's circumstances at the time, but I remember deciding never to make my mom cry again and that I would protect her. My mom worked hard, but life wasn't easy for just the two of us. So when I became a high school student, I started looking for a part-time job. I was six feet tall in my first year of high school, and I was confident in my physical strength from running and weight training. So I looked for physically demanding jobs like construction. That's when I found a particular job. Mom, I'm going to get a part-time job. I found a good one, and I'm thinking of applying. A part-time job, are you sure it's safe? Nothing dangerous, right? My worried mom made me laugh. I wouldn't do anything dangerous. It's a scaffolding job, and it pays quite well. I showed her the job listing. I felt like my mom looked surprised for a moment, so I spoke to her. Is something wrong, mom? You looked a bit startled just now. It's nothing. Look, the people in these pictures have incredible muscles, right? I wonder if you'll get muscles like these from this job. Just be careful not to hurt yourself lifting heavy things. Mom laughed teasingly, and I laughed along with her. Don't worry, I'll be careful. I'm going to start earning my own money now. You don't have to work too hard, Mom. Thank you, Tom. I'm sorry for all the trouble. You're still a high school student, so it's okay to enjoy some time off and have fun, you know. I understand. I'll balance fun and work. I'll study hard, so don't worry. And that's how I started my first part-time job. I went for an interview at Royal Construction Company, which was looking for scaffolding workers, and I passed successfully. I showed up at my first work site on a Sunday. Hey, are you Tom, the guy who just started today? The person who greeted me with a bright smile was a suntanned, refreshingly handsome manual. Yes, I'm new and don't know much, but I'm excited. Nice to meet you. I greeted Nathan respectfully. You've got a lot of energy. That's great. I'm Nathan. Nathan was friendly and easy to talk to, and I immediately liked him. Of course, Nathan. At 25 years old, Nathan was like a brother to me, an only child. Sure, as a job, there were times when he had to be strict but I understood it was natural to be corrected when I made mistakes. Remember, Tom, you're still in high school, so there might be people on the site who act unpleasantly towards you. No matter what, always greet them politely and maintain your manners, Nathan advised me. Nathan taught me about the harsh realities of society through this part-time job. I learned a lot about how to interact with people, how to keep up my motivation, and how to handle those I didn't get along with. Strangely, I could accept things from Nathan that I couldn't when told by a teacher or my mom. Even when my teachers or mom told me the same things, I somehow couldn't take it to heart. But when Nathan told me, it somehow just clicked. When you graduate from high school, what do you plan to do, Tom? Are you going to get a job somewhere? Nathan asked me when I was in my senior year of high school. I come from a single parent family, so in thinking of working after graduating, I responded. Nodding at my words, Nathan said something unexpected. How about working with me then? Only if you're interested, of course. Nathan spoke with an unusual hint of nervousness. 
I was incredibly happy. Nathan, whom I admired like a brother, was asking me to work with him. I had no intention of saying anything but yes. Thank you so much, Nathan. I would love to. I really want to work with you. I shook hands with Nathan, filled with joy. Nathan smiled with relief. Thanks, I was actually really nervous about asking you. I've been anxious since last night, wondering what I would do if you said no, he admitted. I burst out laughing at his unexpected confession. Nathan said he wanted to see my mom, so after my high school graduation, I proposed that the three of us, my mom, Nathan, and I, go out for a meal together. My mom, skilled enough to manage a small restaurant, eagerly prepared for the meal. Nice to meet you, I'm Tom's mother. He's always in your care, she said. Nice to meet you, I apologize for the late introduction. I work at Royal Construction Company. My name is Nathan, he replied. I watched their friendly exchange with a grin. Neither of them are usually like this, but their nervousness was so amusing that I couldn't stop laughing. The three of us enjoyed a delicious meal my mom had prepared. Since the restaurant had a reserved sign at the entrance, we could relax without being disturbed. When dessert arrived, Nathan spoke up again. I know Tom has probably told you, but I'd really like to work with him. I know my words as a young man might not be very reliable, but I'll take good care of Tom. He said earnestly. Seeing Nathan speak so seriously, my mom had a calm expression. Unreliable. Far from it. Tom always talks about Nathan when he comes home from his part-time job. He admires him so much. I have no worries at all. Please take good care of my son, she said. I felt a warmth in my eyes as my mom spoke. Stealing a glance at Nathan, I noticed his eyes were moist too. Seeing my two beloved ones caring about me made me feel truly happy. Thus, I ended up working at Royal Construction Company after graduation, marking the start of my professional life. Tom, are you ready for the next site? Yes, leave it to me. Everything's set. I've been working since high school, so I understand the basics. As a young, ready-to-go worker, I've worked in various places. No matter the site, I worked hard, keeping in mind everything Nathan taught me. As time passed, a turning point came when Nathan turned 35 and I was 26. Tom, actually, I've been transferred to Royal Construction Company in New York, Nathan announced. Really, Nathan, that's amazing. The main office in New York, that's a big deal. Nathan was incredibly skilled and had used his extensive field experience to advance as a manager, continuously delivering impressive results. It seemed his achievements had caught the attention of the headquarters. He had especially made an impact by advocating for the improvement of workers' conditions and had achieved notable results. He was planning to move to the HR department at the headquarters. Sorry, Tom. I wish I could take you to New York with me, but I don't have that kind of authority. Nathan looked genuinely regretful. It's okay, Nathan. I'll work hard here and achieve enough to be called to New York myself. Sure, it would be lonely without Nathan, but I had learned so much from him. I believed I could manage well even in his absence, using what he had taught me. I'm glad to see you've grown so much. I'll do my best in New York, and you do your best here, too. Spending the night talking until morning became a cherished memory. Nathan and I always kept in touch, and when we had time, I would visit him in New York or he would come back here and we'd have fun. Tom, sorry, can you talk right now? I received a call from Nathan in a serious tone six months later. What's wrong? It's rare to hear you sound so serious. Is something wrong? Feeling a bit uneasy, I listened intently to Nathan's words. I was surprised by the unexpected news from Nathan. From today, I will be under your care. My name is Tom. I look forward to working with you. As I introduced myself, applause broke out. Having joined Royal Construction Company right after high school, this was my first experience in another workplace. 
This was a subsidiary of Royal Construction Company, mainly dealing with construction materials. I was here for training to learn more about materials. All right, nice to meet you. I'm the manager, Michael. Michael didn't bother to hide his annoyance. He was not yet 30, younger than me, and already a manager. He clearly knew he was an elite. Then, just 15 minutes into starting work, Michael's scolding came out of nowhere. Hey, Brandon, you've got the numbers wrong again. How many times is this? Damn it. I'm so sorry, Michael. Even though it was my first day, I quickly noticed a problem in this company. Michael's reprimands were quite intimidating. Certainly, making mistakes is not good, but there was also a problem with his way of scolding. I felt very uneasy witnessing this and froed my brows. Two months later, when I had gotten a bit more used to the job and the people, an unusually harsh scolding from Michael was directed at Brandon. Hey, Brandon, are you mocking me? The numbers and the estimate you prepared are wrong. I had to apologize to the client because of your mistake. But sir, those numbers, you loudly told me to input those exact numbers the other day. Brandon, trembling, attempted to counter Michael's accusation. And I knew Brandon wasn't mistaken because I had noted down those numbers too. What? I never said that. Listen, what I said was this. Michael loudly recited numbers, clearly different from before. I couldn't stand his behavior of blaming his subordinates for his own mistakes and trying to shirk responsibility. Brandon was already on the verge of tears. Understand this. This is not my mistake. It's yours. You misheard me. Do you get that, you useless fool? At that moment, my patience snapped. Michael, with all due respect, that was your mistake, not Brandon's. The room buzzed when I spoke up. Probably, no one had ever directly confronted Michael before. Or if they had, I hadn't seen it since I arrived. Huck Tom, what are you talking about? My mistake. Huck, where's your proof? I don't make mistakes. I was remarkably calm in the face of Michael's red-faced anger. I have proof. When you loudly instructed Brandon to make the estimate, I also took notes. I pulled out a memo from my drawer, detailing the date, time, who gave the instructions, and what the content was. Reading from the memo, I recited the numbers Michael had instructed Brandon to use. Naturally, these numbers matched perfectly with the estimate Brandon had prepared. What? Why would you take such notes? Michael always gives instructions rapidly, so I took notes in case Brandon missed anything, I explained. Michael, shaking with anger, glared at me. Tom, you'll regret this. With a look of frustration in his eyes, he grabbed his bag and coat and stormed out. When Michael left, a palpable sense of relief spread throughout the company. Tom, thank you, that was really a lifesaver. Brandon came over to my desk and thanked me. No, no, it's nothing. I just couldn't hold back and had to speak up. I'm sorry if I overstepped, I replied, apologizing to Brandon. I spoke to Brandon in a low voice. Not at all. It was a relief to have someone step in for once, he said. Hearing this, I immediately went to Christopher's desk, the department head. Christopher, what's going on here? I've only been here for about two months, but Michael's behavior and words are clearly over the line. Aren't they? It seems strange to me. Despite being higher in rank than Michael, Christopher was, frankly, quite inconspicuous. He never reprimanded Michael, just watched. Christopher looked uncomfortable at my remark. I leave the training of the staff to Michael. It may seem excessive to you, but that's his way of doing things. I cannot do anything about it. Do you think such behavior is acceptable? Brandon stopped me as I was about to get heated up. Tom, come here for a second. Brandon pulled me aside to the break area. You might not have heard this, Tom, but Michael behaves that way because of his father. He explained. Michael's father, what do you mean? I was really confused and asked Brandon for clarification. Actually, 
Michael's dad, Ken, is the executive vice president at Royal Construction Company's headquarters. That's why nobody, including Christopher, can complain. At first, Christopher, and also the manager, Steve, used to caution him. Yes, in that company, only Michael and Christopher hold positions. I had heard the manager was on assignment, but I never knew that was the reason behind it. Everyone has their own life and family to think about. Opposing Michael can lead to serious trouble. I see, so that's the reason. But it doesn't justify Michael's tyranny. Brandon, aren't you struggling? Brandon gave her a smile at my question and shared his true feelings. It would be a lie to say I'm not struggling. I can't quit my job because my mother is sick and hospitalized. I grew up in a single mother household, so she only has me. Really, that's tough. I can relate because I'm in the same situation. I totally understand how important a mother is. We were technically not on break, so we wrapped up our conversation quickly and got back to work. During break time, we'd go to a nearby diner and talk about various things. Since we both grew up in single mother households, we find a lot of common ground in our childhood stories, making time fly by. I wish I could have talked to you sooner, Tom. I feel like I can do better with you around. Really, I'm glad to hear that. Let's go out for a meal again. We made this promise and returned to our work in the afternoon. I was happy to have made a friend in Brandon, despite the troubling situation with Michael. Michael didn't return to the office that afternoon. The next day, Michael came to the office with a smirk, looking at me. Hey, Tom, you take care of this job. Michael left a task on my desk that I had never handled before. Michael, this doesn't seem to be my responsibility, I said. What? Shut up and do it. It's a my order. Don't pick and choose your work. I realized that Michael's reprimand had shifted to me. Michael, I'll do it. Tom hasn't done this before. Brandon tried to intervene, but Michael sneered. What? I told Tom to do it. Assigning tasks to subordinates is the my job. Don't you butt in. When Brandon tried to persist with but, I stopped him with a hand gesture. It's useless to say anything to Michael. Understood, I'll do it. You should have said so from the start. Hey, hurry up. Michael returned to his seat with a very satisfied look on his face. From that day, as expected, I began to receive unreasonable treatment from Michael. For example, he would deliberately give me wrong instructions, causing trouble for our clients, or he would suddenly appear at the end of a negotiation I had arranged and take the credit for it. Michael, it's troubling when you do things like that. The clients were also confused. When I said that, Michael scoffed at me and replied, It's fine. Taking credit is also part of a boss's job. I felt a deep contempt for Michael, who laughed heartily. That day, feeling incredibly exhausted, I decided to visit my mom's small diner in Nebraska for the first time in a while. Mom, I'm home. Is the diner closed today? I entered the diner, pulling the door with a closed today sign on it. Then my mom raised her voice in a slightly flustered manner. Tom, oh my, welcome back. I waved at my mom, who came out from behind the counter, with a smile. Sorry, mom. I came suddenly without contacting you. It's okay, it's okay. Of course, have a seat. Oh, my mom froze as she looked at the counter. I hadn't seen him from where I was, but there was a man sitting at the counter. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not realize you were here. I apologized hastily. I thought he was a customer. But then, I remembered the closed today sign on the diner door and wondered, why was this man inside? Could he be a friend of my mom's? No, I'm the one who should apologize. I insisted on being let in by your mother. Are you her son? The man, looking at me with a gentle smile, seemed to be around the same age as my mom. Could he be around the same age as my mom? He had an air of refinement, and his attire appeared high-end. I had a feeling I'd seen him somewhere before, but I couldn't quite recall. Yes, I'm Tom, 
her son. I greeted him respectfully. So, you're Tom. Yes, I see, I see. I glanced at my mom, noticing her eyes were moist, and so were the man's. I had a hunch about this man's identity, and my heart started pounding loudly. Mom, is this gentleman? Could he possibly be? The two exchanged a subtle look, and then the man nodded. He proceeded to tell us everything. It was quite shocking, and I struggled to comprehend it all. That night, I was overwhelmed with various emotions and hardly slept. The next day, feeling sleepy, I was greeted at work by Michael's usual smirking smile. I've been waiting for you, Tom. Do this today. As soon as I sat down, he handed me a flyer for a trip to Hawaii. What is this about? We're taking a company trip to Hawaii. You take care of the reservations. There's a travel agency we always use. Coordinate with them. I have grown accustomed to being given decisions as if they were already made. If there was a precedent, there must be someone in charge, so it should be manageable. Looking at the date, it was more than a month away. I suppressed the urge to sigh and replied. Understood. I'll get right on it. After a lot of back and forth with the travel agency, I somehow managed to secure the reservations. In reality, it was incredibly difficult, but finally, it was done. Then, on the day of the trip, I was at the airport. I had arrived early, but as the meeting time approached, there was no sign of anyone else. Sixty people were supposed to come. Looking around, I found not a single familiar face. Even when the meeting time arrived, nobody showed up. Panicked, I called Christopher but got no response, so I called Michael. Michael answered right away. Hellos, what's up, Tom? His voice was filled with amusement. I confronted Michael in a frantic tone. Michael, today is the trip to Hawaii, right? Weren't we supposed to meet at the airport? Michael began to speak, barely containing his laughter. We're all having lunch at a different location right now. Oh, not everyone. Brandon's not here. I told Brandon that the airport was changed. Maybe he's also alone at the airport right now. Michael burst into loud laughter. On the other end of the phone, not only Michael's laughter, but also the voices of others laughing could be heard. I was so angry I could barely contain myself, my whole body shaking with rage. I clenched my free hand tightly, trying to calm down. The thought of Brandon being subjected to the same treatment was unforgivable. Unaware of my anger, Michael continued cheerfully. Well, if you pay the full cancellation fee, you can come here. It's all out of pocket, though. Can you afford it, please, Tom? Fed up with his attitude of looking down on people, I finally lost my patience. That's it. I'm going to teach this guy a lesson. I laughed through my nose as I said to Michael, Ha, huh? pay the full cancellation fee out of my pocket and join you. You're joking. Every single time, you do whatever you want. Everyone there, you're all fired. A notice will be coming from the headquarters soon. Just wait and see. Michael stopped laughing at my words. Now speaking with a hint of panic, different from before. It seemed my mention of a notice from the headquarters struck a nerve. Wait, what are you talking about? I didn't answer him, but hung up and immediately received a call from Brandon. I quickly answered, thinking he must have tried calling multiple times. Tom, Tom, where are you? Michael told me that the airport was changed and I came to the one he mentioned, but there's no one here. I explained the situation to a panicked Brandon. Brandon was speechless at Michael's appalling behavior, then said with difficulty, Why do we have to endure this? What did we ever do to him? Don't worry, Brandon. Hard work and honesty always pay off in the end. Just wait for what happens after the break. After hanging up with Brandon, I made a phone call to a certain place. Four days later, after the summer vacation ended, the company resumed. Good morning, Tom. Thanks for all your encouragement. Brandon immediately thanked me as soon as we met. Don't mention it, what I said was true. See what's happening. 
Brandon looked puzzled, but I just smiled back at him. And then Michael, unlike Brandon, gave me a nasty smile when he saw me. What's up, Tom? You said something about a notice from the headquarters about being fired, but nothing came. Just said that in a fit of anger. Huh? There were snickers from around, but I wasn't phased. I knew what was about to happen. Interesting. Just as I heard. This is a terrible work environment. The manager behaves like this, and no one says anything. A man's voice came from the entrance. He had a grim look on his face, as if he had seen something terribly unpleasant. Indeed, it's embarrassing to think this is one of our group companies, said the man who had just appeared. It was Nathan. He waved at me, so I waved back. Then, another man with a panicked look, whom I had never seen before, was there. Dad, why are you here? Michael was trembling as he saw the unexpected guests and his own father. The man with Nathan was Michael's father, Han. What's this all of a sudden? Outsiders can't just barge in here. Michael was red in the face, but Ken, on the other hand, yelled out with a pale look. Hey, what are you saying? This man is Baker, the president of Royal Construction Company. The room buzzed at that revelation. The president, what? Eh, the president? Well, I suppose you wouldn't know. It's understandable since we're a subsidiary and don't interact directly. I appear in company newsletters and such, but I doubt you remember my face. The man, the current president of Royal Construction Company, said nonchalantly. I came here because I received reports of various problems in this company. I decided to come and see for myself, he continued. What? Who would say such a thing? Michael murmured up to that point, then widened his eyes and pointed at me. Apparently, he was unaware of the common courtesy that it's rude to point at people. It was you, wasn't it? How dare you snitch? President Baker yelled out, his voice several times louder than Michael's. What kind of a fool yells at his subordinates for his own mistakes? Ken, what's become of your son? Ken and Michael jumped in shock, and the other employees were startled by the loud voice. Let's change the location. Prepare the reception room. Christopher, who had been silently observing until then, hurriedly guided everyone to the reception room. President Baker, Nathan, myself, Ken, Michael, and Christopher took their seats. As a female employee served tea and left the room, President Baker began. So, Michael, I hear you've been intimidating your subordinates and mocking them in front of other employees. Michael glanced at me briefly but smoothly lied. Calmly seated next to his father, he seemed more composed than before. No, that's a misunderstanding, he replied. Oh, a misunderstanding. So, you're saying you didn't do such things? Yes, I swear I didn't but I admit my guidance might have been perceived that way due to my inadequacy. For that, I'm deeply sorry, Michael said. Michael took an attitude of respect. His father, Ken, backed him up. If I may, President Baker, I did hear the earlier remarks, and while I thought the way he said was problematic, I can believe he always behaves that way, Ken said. I see, I understand your point. Now, Play that recording, President Baker said, signaling to Nathan with his eyes. Yes, President Baker, right away. When Nathan played the voice recorder from his chest pocket, Michael and Brandon's voice was heard. It was the recording of the reprimand from the day I arrived here. Michael turned pale as he listened to the voice recording. How did this? Why? I recorded it. I was asked to buy Steve here, actually. My coming here was not only for training, but also to observe your behavior, Michael. Michael looked utterly confused. Why? Why would you investigate me? Nathan explained the situation calmly. Steve came to me with his concerns. Your terrible attitude was too much to ignore. When he tried to address it, he was transferred, possibly due to pressure from your father, Ken. The remaining staff were very worried, and he asked if something could be done. Michael looked shocked. He clearly had not been expecting Steve to have made such a request. 
Ken was holding his head, troubled by Nathan's story. That's why I had asked Tom, who might trust, to investigate the situation at this company. I'm sorry, Tom, for putting you through this. Michael, your behavior up to now is unacceptable, but what you did with the trip is beyond forgiveness. Nathan's face was etched with anger. Throughout this, the voice recorder continued to play Michael's problematic statements from day to day. Michael's face grew paler and paler. Michael, after hearing your own words again, what do you think? President Baker asked quietly. Michael was speechless. Ken seemed like he was about to say something, but as the voice recorder played the airport conversation between Michael and me, he fell silent. Listen, those in higher positions must be careful when admonishing their subordinates, even when they make mistakes. Only the mistake should be addressed, not their character. President Baker said, echoing words often said by Nathan. You will all face the consequences of your actions. You're all fired. This company will be closed down later. Those who can value their subordinates are a negative influence on the company. Upon hearing this, Michael yelled at President Baker. Why am I fired? Huh? Don't joke around. This company is only functioning because of me. Ken dragged his spinning son away. Don't you understand yet, son? You reaped what you sowed. You've even implicated me. What are you going to do about this? Dad, why are you stopping me? I don't understand what I did wrong. As Michael continued to rant, Ken and Christopher dragged him out of the room. In the now quiet reception room, Nathan, President Baker, and I sat down, exhaling deeply. Really, not realizing his faults after all, that is just crazy. I could only manage a wry smile at Nathan's words. President Baker also smiled wryly and said, I didn't expect Ken's son to be so unresponsive to reason. You must have been under a lot of stress. I truly apologize for that. It's fine, really. I like working with Nathan and wanted to be of help. Plus, I guess I was able to help. Dad, right. I was extremely nervous, calling President Baker dad in the flow of the conversation, my heart pounding rapidly. Yes, President Baker of Royal Construction Company was my father. Unexpectedly, my father had been close by all this time. He looked at me, wide-eyed. I'm sorry, that was presumptuous of me. As I fumbled nervously, Nathan burst out laughing. Nathan, it's not funny. Don't worry, President Baker is touched. Right, President, that Tom called you dad. At those words, my father nodded vigorously, his voice choked with emotion. I never thought Tom would call me dad. I'm so happy, sorry, I'm getting emotional thinking about everything, he said, starting to cry genuinely. Remembering the first time I met him at Mom's Diner, I thought about the atmosphere between my mother and father. My father told me about the past. He was a struggling architecture student dating my mom, living a tough life. When he was dating my mom, I was a pool college student aspiring to be an architect and was living a tough life. When I almost couldn't pay my tuition due to family circumstances, I met the daughter of the then president of Royal Construction Company, and somehow she fell in love with me at first sight and offered to help with my tuition and proposed marriage. When my mom found out, she disappeared from my dad's life. My dad searched desperately for her but couldn't find her, and after much deliberation, he accepted the help, graduated from college, married the daughter, and took over the company. I'm really sorry. I know no amount of apologies will suffice, but I truly am sorry. My dad apologized, and at first, I couldn't grasp the reality of it all. Overwhelmed by the amount of information, my mom said to me, Tom, I found out I was pregnant with you after I had disappeared from his life. I left because I thought marrying the daughter of Royal Construction Company would better fulfill his dreams than staying with someone unremarkable like me. My mom looked at my dad with a kind face. That was when I realized, yes, my mom truly loved him. When I found out I was pregnant, I was truly happy. I was happy to have you born. It was hard, but you grew up to be such a kind child. She said with a tearful smile. 
And then, I received a letter from your mom. It was when you were in elementary school, with a photo of you wearing your backpack. I was really surprised, but also very happy. He said, showing me the photo of me that he treasured in his diary. At that time, my wife and my father-in-law were still alive, so I couldn't do anything. It's no excuse, but I could only contact your mom after my wife and father-in-law had passed away. My dad apologized again, from the bottom of his heart. I understand. I'm an adult now, and I understand that men and women have their own circumstances. I don't feel unhappy because my mom took good care of me, and strangely, I don't hate you either. I said after a moment of silence, sharing my true feelings. I was busy comforting the two of them as they burst into tears. Once they calmed down, I reported to my dad about the matter Nathan had asked me about. When I mentioned the trip to Hawaii, my dad got furious. What's that about? I can't forgive such a person. Nathan and HR, right? I'll sort this out right away. Wait for me, he said as he left the small diner. It goes without saying that I soon received a barrage of calls from Nathan, who must have heard from my dad. Tom, Tom, what do you mean you're the son of President Baker? His confusion was severe, but now it's a funny story. Thank you, Tom. As a father and as a president, I will act in a way that I won't be ashamed of from now on. After holding back his tears, my dad nodded, and then I remembered something. Ah, oh, Dad, I have a favor to ask. Soon after, there was a directive, and the company was set to close, leading to everyone's resignation. Nathan said it was an overly bold way to lay people off, and he wasn't wrong. Afterward, I was set to go to the main office in New York, and I would be working with Nathan again. Now, I'm planning to do my best as Nathan's right-hand man in HR. Ah, Tom, good morning. I was greeted at the entrance of the company. It was Brandon. Brandon, good morning. How's your mom? Yes, thanks to you. President Baker recommended a great hospital, and she's heading in the right direction. I was worried when I heard the company was closing. In fact, I had asked my dad to let Brandon work at the headquarters and to recommend a good hospital for his mom. And Steve, who had been on assignment, was also back at the headquarters. I wanted Brandon, who had been working hard even through tough times being targeted by Michael, to be rewarded for his efforts. Leave it to me, I'll take care of the job in the hospital. From what I hear, you're diligent and sincere, so there should be no problem. And so, Brandon secured re-employment at the headquarters and a transfer to a better hospital for his mother. But President Baker, why are you so good to someone like me? I couldn't believe it when I heard. Brandon said with a puzzled look, I smiled and replied. Didn't I tell you, Brandon, if you work hard and live honestly, you'll always be rewarded. If you're working hard, rest assured there's always someone watching and appreciating your efforts. There are also those who will offer a helping hand when you need it. I don't want to be someone who attacks others for laughs. I aspire to be someone who extends a helping hand. I am motivated to work hard so that those who do the right thing are rewarded, even if it's just a little.